But if you've ever lost a 10 mil working on your car, do not lose this E10. It's like a 10 millimeter, but expert difficulty. So today we will be changing the oil on my Sea-Doo GTX-S155. Uh, I will be using the original XPS lubricants made for this particular motor. Uh, this is going to be my first time changing the oil, but from what I've seen, it's pretty easy. However, there isn't another tutorial on YouTube that I saw, so looks like I'll be the, uh, the first one to show you how it's done. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to start it and let it run for 30 seconds. I'm in the garage, so I don't have a hose hooked up. Ideally, you'd want to use a hose, uh, not more than two minutes on the hose, but I'm going to run it just for 30 seconds, uh, just to let the oil circulate. And we're going to start it here. That's right at 30. Oil circulated. We should be good to go. The next step is we're going to raise our seat here. And then we're going to take off this cover here. Hard to do with one hand. Okay, we got the cover off. We'll just set it aside. And what we're going to do is we're going to take out our oil dipstick. Um, this is where we'll be pouring the oil into. But we're going to take out the dipstick and use a fluid extractor that we're going to extract the oil with. We have our dipstick removed and on my oil extractor I went ahead and marked where 18 and a half inches is. That is how far it is going to be going into the dipstick tube. I got this measurement online, so you might want to use a different measurement if you got a different motor or if you find something more accurate. So there's 18 and a half, and we just start pumping all that oil out. It'd be easier with two hands, but... It'd help if you read the directions first. Oh, there we go. So if you can hear that noise, that means we have sucked up all the uh, oil. Not all that's in the motor, but we've just sucked up all that's in the sump at the bottom. So what we're going to do is I'll let this gurgle and make some more noises for a few seconds. I'm going to put the dipstick back, close the oil cap, and then we're going to crank the engine over without starting it. Very important. You don't want to start the jet ski. You want to crank over the engine so it circulates all that oil in the bottom. Let's show you how to do it right. So what we're going to do is we're going to pull, put our tether on. We're going to activate the engine or the, the gauges. What we're going to do is we're going to pull the throttle lever all the way down while holding the start button. Here's what it's going to look like. Pull throttle lever, hold. So now we repeat exactly what we did after we cranked the engine. We're gonna put the, the fluid extractor in there, shove it down the dipstick hole. I'm gonna open my 
cap here for the oil. We'll actually take it out this time. And then we're gonna start pumping. And you can see the oil making its way down. So I've got all the oil evacuated. Uh, this is what it comes out to. This is the three liter mark, so I got exactly three liters out. How much that is in quartz, not exactly sure, it doesn't matter. Um, but luckily for us, the oil filter is right there. And you can't see it from here, but conveniently for us, it has been pre-stripped. So that's gonna be fun to remove. Uh, and it's always torqued down to million foot-pounds with the impact wrench, so that'll be even more fun. Uh, hopefully yours isn't as stripped as mine is, because that's going to be not a lot of fun. To get that out, you're going to need an E10 socket. And of course, I could not find the socket just by itself, so I had to buy this 25-piece set that includes a, T, uh, a E10 socket in 3 4 3 8 drive. So we're going to see if we can hopefully very easily remove that. If not, it's gonna suck, but hopefully we can remove it. It's been uh, 15 minutes trying to remove this dumb uh, oil filter. It's just, with this air box in the way, it's really tight to get to. I did break it loose. I'm about to unscrew it. For those at home who have no idea how to take it out, here's a pro tip. You're going to need, obviously, the socket. You're gonna need one of these swivels. One extension. If you have a small ratchet, smaller than this one, you might be able to make it work. I use this. So all put together, looks like this. This part swivels. And you just send it on down, just like that. And then you break it loose. I don't know what impact they like to use at Sea-Doo or at uh, the dealerships, but this thing was tight, tight on there. Uh, but uh, thankfully now I've loosened it and started removing it. No, 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 not today, not today, sir. not today, not today, not today. Why today? Why today? Why today? One small socket. Where could you go? filter oil and there is oil all over my motor we again that was dumb should have let it drain our oil change kit comes with the oil filter and it also comes with two brand new o-rings and two of those brand new o-rings go right there where the orange ones are now, when you go put these O-rings on, make sure to lube them up with oil, and then you just slap the filter on, and uh, you should be good to go. Of course, I'm all greasy. Now I like to use a pick for the o-rings, you don't have to, 
uh, but I do. This first o-ring that I removed is the bigger, fatter one. First one here is going to be this big, fat one. Okay, there's the first one. Then we'll use the pick for the second one. Okay, there's those two O rings. Now I'm going to grab this dirty oil and lube them up. So all we're going to do is you see that hole, you take your filter and then you shove it in that hole. It's like not too bad, but there we go. And it's in there. And of course you need that special dumb socket. Um, but if you've ever lost a 10 mil working on your car, do not lose this E10. It's like a 10 millimeter, but expert difficulty. Because when it falls in there, <laughs> you ain't ever getting it back out. So, yeah, I'm going to scrub my hands down clean with brake cleaner and then grab a socket that securely holds onto that socket. Because, uh, yeah, that took me 10 minutes to find where, where I lost that bolt. No fun. All that's left to do is pour in the oil. Now, of course, being c -Doo, you need a special funnel because mine, mine's not angled, so uh, it's not gonna pour straight down. So you're gonna have to pour it slowly so you don't get it spilled all over the place because they only give you a select amount of oil. I'm putting in three quarts, and I'm going to start with about eight ounces of this because we don't know how much oil I extracted there might be some left so I'll pour most of this in and then start it up let it run for 30 seconds ensure trailer is straight and then uh, see where the oil level is after that um, technically you're supposed to get to operating temperature it's not hooked up with the hose and then I'll leave some oil in the back just to just to check when it's finally out on the lake uh, in a few months since Minnesota just got to see 50 degree weather Oh, come on. And we're right where we want to be on the dipstick. So we're good. Only thing left to do is put the engine cover on. Mm -hmm. 
And there you have it. That is how you change the oil on your 2013 or newer Sea-Doo GTX 155S. Happy riding. Ah, I got oil on my nice shirt. That's why you wear, wear dirty clothes when you're working on things like that. How fun. Okay, clean the hands off so I can grip this dumb thing. Cool, no more oil.